Hey guys, Crewman here, continuing my journey with the RX 7900 XTX. And today I'm going to talk about how overclocking has gone for me and my experience with it, uh, some tips and tricks, and the applications I applied it to. So let's get started. Now let me go over the drivers I'm using. I'm using the uh, latest AMD drivers, 22.12.2. Uh, for the RX 79 series, I downloaded them here. I'll put a link in the I'll put a link in the comments below. So here's the PC I'm running it on. This is my other gaming PC. I use it in my living room, like a console basically. It's got a Ryzen 5900X that I repaired, 16 gigs of 3200 DDR4 memory. It's uh, an ROG Strix B550i motherboard, 500 gig M.2 NVMe, and an 850 watt power supply. So yeah, that's the bench I'm testing it on. All right, so how I got my overclock settings and what I learned. So the first thing I did was I didn't really have any experience with overclocking AMD GPUs outside of mining. So I went and checked out some videos to get some tips and tricks and some guidance. So the first video I saw was Tasty PC. She did an excellent job explaining her GPU, her settings, and how she got a feel for the card. It really, really helped me understand you know how overclocking on AMD GPUs works and then the second video I used was I used a video from the name of uh, bang for buck PC gamer I used his settings as a starting point as he showed that his settings worked on multiple games and it seemed like a good place to start now I want to explain that you know not every GPU is the same um, they're bin differently, you could have different reference models, they all behave differently. You could have them placed in different locations with warmer or cooler ambient temperatures and that all affects how your overclocks work. So let's go over the settings that I started with. All right guys, so this is the AMD Wattman software uh, and the important thing to understand about the RX 7900 XTX is there are three important things you have to worry about overclocking the power limit, the GPU clock speed, and the VRAM clock speed. So for this first test, I'm playing Horizon Forbidden or Horizon Zero Dawn on the PC at stock settings. All right, so let's take a look at the settings I'm using on Horizon Forbidden West. Zero Dawn, I mean. I'm going to probably say that a while. Everything's on max. Um, I think the 7900 XTX can blow this game out of the water, and it looks fantastic. Now, one caveat I want to bring out is that I am running OBS, so the frames will be, I don't know, maybe like 5% lower than normal. However, it will scale appropriately. So, you know, you can just add maybe 3 to 5% frames after, um, you know, when, when OBS is off to determine the true, fra the true frames I'm getting. And I did test that, uh, obviously not in this video. But as you can see, I'm getting, you know, high 80s, low 90s. Um, and then when I enter combat, I'm starting to get mid to low 80s which you know, I don't notice it, it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you can see how beautiful this game looks. But anyway, there's a few spikes. Uh, sometimes it dips up to the 90s, but it seems to generally be like the mid to low 80s. Uh, and this is again, stock settings. Okay, so now that I went over where I got my initial OCs, I'm just gonna go over them. Uh, I went with a um, max frequency of 3100, voltage 1065, Make sure you have smart access memory on, by the way. If you don't, none of your overclocks are going to work, and it's just going to fail. Um, power is at max at 115%, and I put the VRAM timings at about 2560. And that is the first batch of OCs I tried, and let's see how they do. All right, so as you can see here, the settings are running max on everything same as before all the settings will be the same i'm just showing you it again um, i'm getting a little bit of fps performance but this one is i'm gonna just be honest with you it's gonna be a fail um, as you can see it will crash right here now it doesn't really go over the crash all right so here's the fun part this is where the trial and error begins so you've got you know the power limit basically always should stay at 15 percent, so that's easy for the max frequency, you know, you can mess around with it from anywhere from 3,000 to 30, 32. I ended up bumping mine back to make it stable. 
Um, 3000 was a sweet spot for me. As far as my my voltage, my undervolting, I actually ended up raising it uh, as the lower ones, the lower settings were giving me more crashes. And for the VRAM tuning, I actually ended up raising it from 2560 to 2726. Now, this was attempt to number four for me. I'm skipping the other ones. And I have GPU Z up to show its stability. And let's see how it does. All right, so I'm not gonna show you the settings again because it's all the same. Uh, I'm just doing a quick run. I'm, I'm basically taking the same route and I'm gonna do the same fight just so we can see a comparison. I wasn't able to get the benchmark running in this game. Um, but long story short, you can see the FPS is up. Um, around the fight scene, it, it it's averaging somewhere when you take out the highs and the lows uh, in the mid 90s, like 93 to 97. Um, as you can see, it, it is fluctuating, but the average is there. And when you take into account how it was, you're looking at about 85 in the uh, in the previous video. I've got about a 10% overclock um, after everything's said and done, which is actually pretty impressive. And I ran this overclock or I ran this setting for about two hours, and I had no issues crashing. Whereas all the other ones, I was getting a crash after about five to 15 minutes. So I think I found my setting and I'm going to go ahead and call this done on this game and we're going to try Cyberpunk right now. Alright, so this is just me back to Wattman showing you that I reset everything to defaults. Um, but here's what's important. Now these settings are how I would play Cyberpunk on 4K, in 4K on a 7900 XTX. Um, I did some research with FSR because I've never used it before and quality is what I would use. And I'll, there's an image up here showing why I would use it. And now that you've seen the settings, let's run the benchmarks. So since this game has a dedicated benchmark, I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Uh, as you can see, you get about 34 frames, which is very playable when you consider that most consoles, like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, are locked at 30 for most games in performance mode. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to go over, people were having issues with their junction temperatures, saying they were pretty high. So I just wanted to show you guys at this very demanding game. I'm about 85. So that didn't seem too bad. I expect it to be around there. Um, as you can see, this benchmark looks beautiful. And this is, this is playable. I would absolutely play Cyberpunk on these settings in 4K. And I would be fine with it. So this is just the benchmark. Uh, and as you can see, I've got about 34.17 average FPS. As you can see now, I've swapped back to my overclocks that I know work. Um, 3000 on the max frequency, 1100 on the voltage, and 2726 on the VRAM with uh, max power. And again, these are the settings I'm running on Cyberpunk. Now, these are just my preferred settings on how I would play this game on this graphics card. Obviously, you all have your own opinion, and I'm not here to influence it. I just want to show you the settings I would play. So, running the, gra the benchmark again, uh, you definitely see an improvement. Like I said, this is a very beautiful game, and I would, I would play this game on this resolution. Uh, I'm more of a, for single player games, I prefer quality uh, over frames, as long as it's playable. So for me, uh, this overclock is, is actually very impressive. Um, the extra frames you're getting at this low FPS make a big difference in my humble opinion. So, I mean, this, this benchmark's beautiful. Sometimes I just like to watch it. Anyway, um, once it's finished running, you'll see that we have an average FPS of about 39.20, which is about 10% more, almost exactly 10% more than when we last ran the benchmark with stock settings. So in conclusion, I had a lot of fun overclocking this GPU. I think the most important thing to do is to find a starting point um, that you're comfortable with, like I did, and then you just need to go from there. It took me four rounds of tuning to, to really dial in my card. Um, the one thing that, from what I've seen and in my experience, I'd always say the same is your power. You always want to have that maxed out because if you're going to overclock to get the most performance, there is no point in just not maxing it out. Now, it's going to take a lot of power, but if you're trying to overclock to get performance, I really don't think you care at that point. 
Um, so at that point, it's just trying to figure out the proper dial, you know, the proper settings for your your VRAM, then the you know your undervolting curve and your max frequency. Uh, so you know your mileage will vary. My settings may not work for you. Now remember, you know every card is different. Um, I don't have you know the reference card does not have three eight pins. I don't think it affects it from the videos that I've seen. It seems like all the overclocks are still you know more or less at around ten percent because you know I was looking to buy a three three plug one at first, but I, I really don't think that matters. So this is just a basic guide for gaming only. I did not nor do I really care about synthetic benchmarks at this point. It was just purely to see what kind of performance I could get for gaming. And finally, I don't think auto overclocking is worth it. If you're trying to learn how to overclock this GPU and you're trying to get the max performance, all auto overclocking does is give you a little bit more performance with sometimes some unexpected consequences. Uh, if you check out j 2 Cents video where he basically shows that when he auto overclocked, he ended up getting worse performance. Um, so, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with it. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is my second video in my AMD RX 7900 XCX, uh, series. I have quite a few more videos coming out before I post my final review. I really, really want to learn this card and understand every aspect of it so I can properly give you my opinion on whether or not it's worth buying. So... Please like and subscribe for more of this content and all my other content. And uh, have a nice day. And Croupman out.